This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Perepaudi Pollas, uh, who is a professor of prehist prehistory and uh, archaeology at the Universitat de Valencia and vice president uh, uh, of the International Numismatic Council. He, he has also been a member uh, he has been a visiting scholar in the most prestigious uh, numismatic institution around the world, such as the Cabinet des Médailles de Paris, the University of Oxford, the Department of Coins and Medals at the British Museum, the Royal Coin Cabinet of Stockholm, uh, Bologna, and of course, uh, Dulcis in Fundo, last but not least, uh, at the ANS. He received the, the Jeton de Vermeille medal, um, medal, sorry, awarded by the Société Française de Numismatique in 1998, and uh, uh, Dallier Roche, medal awarded by the Académie de Description and Belles Lettres, again in France in 1999, the medal of the Royal Numismatic Society in 2016, the Huntington Award of the American Numismatic Society. And uh, Pere Pau has focused his research uh, on the ancient uh, coinages, uh, mostly Roman, uh, but also Iberian and Greek, uh, in the Iberian Peninsula, is the author of over 140 articles and 20 books. Um, I mean, I have a long list of the books, but I have to uh, remind everybody if this is important, if, if you need to, that is also uh, one of the authors of the series of Roman provincial coinage that was first issued first issue in London, Paris, 1992. And uh, um, he has uh, one of his most recent books uh, are La Monedas Provinciales Romanas de España, so the Roman provincial coins of Hispania. And then after this lunch and I have to say that I have also to thank Pere Pau for his help in uh, the book, in the catalog, for the catalog of the RBW collection for the sections about Spain and the Spanish imitations. And I shut up. So thank you. And so please uh, join me welcoming Pere Pau. Thank you very much, really. Well. Thank you very much, Lucia, for this very kind and nice introduction. And it's a pleasure to stay here to talk about the topic of the Roman, the local coinages of the Spain, Spain and Portugal, Hispania. And I'm going to, to give an overview about these local coinages, this short period of local coinages. Well, the ancient coinages of the Iberian Peninsula can be divided in two, two chronological groups. The first extends from the 6th century BC to the death of Julius Caesar this one. And the second the second uh, extends from the death of Julius Caesar to the Claudius, the Emperor Claudius the First. These um, coins, these coinages were minted by most part by towns with a legal status of municipality or colony. They were a further consequence of the process of legal transformation of the cities initiated by Julius Caesar and continued by Tiberius, Augustus and Tiberius. Civic coinage wasn't a phenomenon specific to the Iberian Peninsula, but was part of a general practice that is documented 
in other provinces of the Roman Empire, lasting in the eastern part until the years 275-276. The populations of Hispania were progressively incorporated into Roman ways of life throughout the second and first centuries BC. This cultural evolution was a consequence of Roman political dominance, the continued presence of the army, the arrival of Roman and Italic emigrants, and the incorporation of local economies into a more global and larger scale Mediterranean circuit. This process of change accelerated after Caesar. As he initiated the first great program of colonization and legal promotion of indigenous cities, which after his death was continuous as said by Augustus. Here is the map with colonies and municipia. You can see that there is a lot of new towns, new villages and promoted uh, native cities. Because of this policy, a minimum of 23 colonies were founded in fertile and accessible areas in which veterans of the army and plebeian population of Rome settled. At the same time, some 77 indigenous villages with a high level of civic development granted municipal status. From the moment in which the emperor Augustus consolidated his power after the battle of Actium, the issues of the cities of Hispania evolved towards a new model of coinage that was developed from the conviction of what was most appropriate without any kind of imposition. Issues from native population shifted from the diversity of types, weight patterns and non-Latin scripts to a more uniform model. On the obverse, the emperor was portrayed surrounded by a legend that identifies him and on the reverses an image with a local significance was engraved accompanied by the name of the issuing city and occasionally by personal names almost always magistrate. Civic issues were intermittent and irregular, and everything seems to indicate they began the coin production progressively, and in most of them, it took place in an advanced time in the reign of Augustus. During his reign, the maximum number of cities a streaking coins is documented, 31, and an irregular distribution within the three provinces. Three are in Lusitania, eight in Betica, and 20 in Tarraconensis. 
with Tiberius, Tarraconensis will continue being the province with the largest number of issuing cities, 19 out of a total of 25. And with Caligula, all of them, certainly eight. The most important means, provincial means, were Caesar Augusta, by far, as can be seen, Emerita, in this case, Tarraco, Cartagonova, Calagurris, and Lepida Thersa. Of these means, none of them were in Betica, even though it was a very Romanized province, one of the richest, and in addition, it was home of many privileged and peregrine cities. It's also surprising from this ranking that the provincial capitals of the Tarragonensis and Betica weren't the most important means, since Caesar Augusta, the first one, issued more coins than Tarraco, almost double, and Gades put more wealth into circulation than Patricia. Regarding the physical space of the workshops, archaeological excavations haven't clearly recognized architectural remains that could be identified as a mint. It is improbable the existence of permanent workshops in the cities. Perhaps Caesar Augusta and Emerita, but in the rest of them, the issues were struck intermittently. During this period, which spans almost a century, a good number of cities only struck coins on three or four occasions and with a low output in most of them. The available evidence doesn't allow to us to know how this activity was carried out. The existence of itinerant engravers with or without a workshop seems to be the most common operating model. Since there are overs dies that show stylistic similarities with those used in other cities, as for example, in this slide, you can see Kelsa, Cartagonova, and Iliki, or in this case of our coins of Tiberius with Cascantum and Gracuris. There are other examples. Despite these similarities, it hasn't yet been possible to identify any overs die that has been used for issues of another mean. However, it's conceivable that there was mobile engravers and minting workshops. As far as the different levels of authority is concerned, RPC volume one has defined three levels of authority. Whether or not imperial authorization was required for cities to issue coins is a debated matter that hasn't yet been satisfactorily resolved. 
The minting of coins has always linked to power. This is well known. That of cities, independent, and that of sovereigns, kings or emperors. When the new political order was established under Augustus, there is no doubt that the authority that ultimately decided on the issues was the emperor, but we don't know to what extent that control was exercised. We don't know the legal framework under which local emissions were struck, if any. Hispanic coins on some occasions mentioned that the cities requested authorization from the emperor, as can be deduced from the legends Permisu Caesaris Augusti that we can see in this coin of Emerita with complete Permisu, right? no doubt. And we can see the same formula in Patricia, per caes au. But most provincial coins don't record in their legends any kind of permit. There is no doubt that if the cities of the Roman Empire were able to issue coins, it was because Augustus allowed it since he could have suppressed them if he had wanted, as can be seen from the account, the well-known account that Dio put in the mouth of Messinas. Cities shouldn't have their own coins, weight systems, and measures. They should be required to use ours. The civic issues of Hispania don't provide conclusive data about the need for permission because in some issues of Betica, a senatorial province and Lusitania, an imperial province, we found in the legend the formula permao, while in Tarraconensis, an imperial province, it wasn't used in any means. Thus, the simultaneous use of per au formula in both imperial and senatorial provinces doesn't help to clarify if imperial permission was needed. In two cities, Romula and Italica, Augustus's imperial permission had broad validity, not only during his reign, but also after his death, as indicated in the legend Perm Divi Au. It's very clear. The decision to extract coins was taken by the institution that represented civic power, the local Senate, as can be seen from the mention of the name of the city or from the reference to a decree of the decurions, as we can see in Carteia, there are to the left, the legend is ex senatus consulto faciendum curavit, and at right, ex decreto 
the Curion. Or in this other, from Cartaya also, the legend is the Creto de Curionum. Consequently, we must bear in mind that each issue was approved and defined by the local Senate via the Curion's decree, in which its volume and formal aspects, such as the diversity of the nomination and designs were specified. Magistrates represent the third and final level of authority after the emperor and the local senate. Although there are means that never mention them or only sometimes. It's mentioned in the legend doesn't always have a sense of control since it could also sanction the legality of coinage to have an eponymous meaning to identify the people who paid, who could pay for the issue as happened in the Italian city of Pestum or several of them could have come together. The sporadic nature of civic coinages and their small volume of production made the existence of magistracies dedicated exclusively to control production made it unnecessary. For this reason, the magistracies that appear in the legend on the coins always correspond to an office in the administration of the municipalities or colonies. Among them, Duoviri are the ones who usually appears on coins as responsible for the issues. In this case, the abbreviations are always similar to Bill. In two cities, in Colonia, in this case, and also Cartella, Quatuorbiri, rather than Duoviri, are recorded. Other local magistrates mentioned in the coins in the coin legends are the ediles, although in the smaller numbers and always associated with the minting of services. It's a general rule. The ediles only struck the low denominations, denominations below the ass. Also now, this interesting, also now is the prefecture. As you well know, the prefecture was the office of the person who replaced the emperor or the members of his family when they were appointed Dumbiri. This is a coin of Cartagonova. This is a, a coin that has uh, the Dumbiri where Agrippa and Augustus. The Lucius Venius was prefect prefectus of Caesar, Julius uh, uh, Augustus, and Ibero was the prefect of Agrippa. The conquest of Hispania by the Romans at a time 
when the use of coin was little developed, let the Iberian coinages be adapted to the Roman monetary system. In imperial times, we don't know the name of the coins, although at this time, the weights coincide with those of the imperial monetary system. So presumably they were homologated with the Roman bronze coins. The provincial issues of Hispania were struck in bronze, never in silver. And the weight standard was framed in the band of which contemporary imperial issues were minted. In this case, for example, the Publius Caricius issues, those of Rome or even those of Gaul, although they show some variations. During the second triumvirate, the units represented by asses weight circa 14 grams. And the asses were struck in most of cities in a band within a band of 10, 13 grams. So later after the triumvirate, the issues, the standard was lowered and they were similar to the, uh, the asses struck at Rome. Regarding the metals used for bronze coins, the adaptation of the civic coinages to the Augustus reform was uneven since it was adopted late and not in all cities. During the reign of Augustus, the workshops used only ternary bronze, copper, lead, and tin. Even though this emperor had introduced new metals around 23 BC and Publius Caricius struck Dupondi in uh, Emerita on Oricalcum. The use of Oricalcum was introduced into the local issues from the reign of Tiberius, but only in a small number of means, Casar Augusta, Tarraco, Turiaso, Ercavica. Bronze with high lead content and a variable composition of tin was the most used alloy for asses and their fractions. With the exception of a few workshops that used pure copper, as Iliki, this is the example of Iliki, but also in. Caesar Augusta, Segobriga, and Ilic, and Romula. The denominations issued by the cities of Hispania illustrate that the production of coins was focused on small values. During the reign of the first three emperors, the ass was the most minted denomination, followed by the semis, the dupondi, the, the quadrants, and sesterci. As time goes by, there was a tendency towards increasing production of coins with a higher value than the ass and the decrease of lower values to the point that during the reign of Caligula, 
the meaning of quadrants is unknown. You can see, Duponius goes up, Sestertius goes up, the semis down, quadrants down, and asses more or less are stable, we can say. This development could be explained by the existence of a sufficient number of small denominations or by a moderate rise in prices. A similar trend can be found in the production of Rome and cities in other provinces, where there are a gradual reduction of the smallest denomination in a progressive increase in the issuance of values higher than theirs. The economic importance of the civic coinages of Hispania depends on the number of dice that were used. So knowing this amount, even if only approximately, it's crucial to assess the role they played. Statistical estimates seems to indicate that the wealth minted in absolute terms was small. Throughout the period, the total number of dice recorded for each denomination is as follows. 68 for Sesterci, 178 for Dupondi, 2,287 for Asses, 1,191 for Semises, and 163 for Quadrants. The die study results for some means, such as Iliki, Cartagonova, and Erkavica, confirm the soundness of these estimates. These figures delimit the magnitude of the wealth issued by civic means. According to the different estimates of Adai productivity, the wealth extract ranges between the whole ranges between two and seven millions denarii for a period of about 66 years. This amount was insufficient to finance the cities or to make high value payments. Although they could have played a prominent part in some payments made by the city. And what about the designs? The civic coins of Hispania differ from previous indigenous coinage mainly because of the typology, designs, and legends. Here you can see the scale relative size of the types used during 44 BC and AD 54. It's combined the overs and reverse, but the size corresponds to the number of examples, the issues. This change was motivated by the influence of coinage struck during the last years of the Republic and the beginning of the empire. We must bear in mind that most coinages were struck by cities with legal stat status of colony or municipality and their inhabitants had Latin or Roman citizenship. One of the most formal differences between the civic issues and the preceding 
indigenous carnages was the widespread of the portrait, which meant the portrait, of course, of the emperor, which meant an important change in the daily life of the coin users. Since from Augustus onwards, the portrait of the emperors began to be present in all economic transactions of the Roman Empire. The Battle of Action was a turning point since from then on, the obverse was almost exclusively used to show the portrait of Augustus, representing one of the most characteristic signs of the transition from the Republic to the empire. The portrait of the emperor was always shown in profile, facing left or right, and very often with a laurel wreath. The question that arises in relation to the imperial portraits is whether their election was voluntary or compulsory. All indications suggest that the adoption was voluntary and consequence of its use in late Republican coinages by Caesar and the leaders of the second triumvirate. And the progressive elites awareness about Augustus' position of power. With the adoption of the emperor portrait, the cities express loyalty to the empire in accordance with the new ideology of legitimation of the emperor and his heirs. The laureate portrait of the emperor was the most common in coinage of Hispania and in the entire empire also. Sometimes he was accompanied by a symbol in front or behind or both. In this case, with a litus and a symbolum or with the star and thunderbolt in the portraits of Divus Augustus. The choice of the emperor portrait for the others meant that cities could only display their own designs with local significance, significance on the reverse. The designs chosen by the Roman cities of Hispania are varied and provide information about their origin and about their social and religious life. The design on the reverses are in general terms very Roman as corresponds to privileged populations that were integrated by right into the Roman Empire. However, the origin of the population is behind the survival of some indigenous designs in municipalities. In this case, the um, Athena or Pegasus in the Unticesken and then in the Municipium Emporia. In this case, the horseman in the native city, Celtiberian city of Bilbilis and the Municipium of Bilbilis. Or the wolf 
in the Iltirta uh, Iberian city and the Municipium Ilerba, indicating all these cases that there was no total break with their roots despite their new legal status. On the contrary, the colonies founded for army veterans developed on the reverses their own themes, such as legionary signa, as you can see in, in a coin of Caesar Augusta and another from Patricia in Caesar Augusta, you can, these are the legions that were uh, deducted, were uh, founded the colony, uh, Legio uh, the four, six, and 10th. Also the colonies use uh, the rituals or religious themes like Sulcus Primigenius, that is the with the the priest and the the oxen. Other designs in colonies are, as you can see, the um, symbols of the Roman religion. This in this case is a copy of the uh, denarius of uh, Julius Caesar. But some designs were used in both types of cities, colonies and municipalities. Those related to the imperial cult, to the honors paid to the emperor and to dynastic themes were frequent, which are proof of the integration degree of the native cities promoted to the rank of municipality and the awareness of the new order established by Augustus. And members of the imperial family were also depicted on coins and all heirs to the imperial throne appeared. In this case, Caligula, but Libya was also chosen for some occasions, either by her portrait, in this case on globe in, in Romula, or full length seated in Casar Augusta, following in this case the model of Roman coinages. In addition to these types, oak wreaths, oak wreaths, which frequently appear on local issues, also had honorific significance for the emperor portrayed on the others. Unlike the coinage of Rome, historical events were rarely referred on the reverses. Perhaps the trophies on the coins struck by Elebenius and Quintus Varius, prefects of Augustus and Agrippa, allude to the Cantabrian Wars, as we can see in this denarius uh, struck by Publius Caricius. The municipality of Bilbilis echoed the joint consulship held by Tiberius and Sejanus in 31 uh, AD, since 
It was the only civic coinage in the empire to mention it. It is interesting that the name of the Sejanus suffered the damnatio memoria. You can see to the left, but this is another example. There are, there are quite a lot. In some issues, the reverses represent altars, temples, and statues, but it's difficult to know if they were real or only symbolic representations. The scant evidence we have about the existence of this type of monuments refers to the colony of Tarraco. The altar in this coin may be the one mentioned by Quintilian having grown a branch on top. And the temple also in Tarraco may have been faithfully the one that the colony dedicated to Augustus after his death. For the rest of temples, as for example, this in Casa Augusta and this statue, for the rest, we don't know if they existed, although it's possible they did. Finally, the bull was also a widely used design in Tarragonensis. This animal was depicted standing or marching with or without an ornamental triangular frame on the horns. This adornment already known in Republican numismatic iconography and in Roman reliefs was issued, but pardon, sorry, was issued by bulls to be immolated, which suggests that it had a religious character. As far as the legends are concerned, Latin was the script used by almost all Roman issues of Hispania. The new political and territorial order brought with it the disappearance of non-Latin writing in public manifestations. The replacement of Greek, Buddhist, and native writings had occurred slowly since in the first century BC, the elites of the most important population of Hispania spoke Latin as evidenced by the decrease in text in Paleo-Hispanic scripts and the increase in Latin evidence. From the time of Augustus, the dominant language and script in city administration was Latin. The change was general and quite quick since obtaining legal status meant that Latin became the official language. There are, this is an example of this, this, from this change from very few legends or very few words in the indigenous uh, issues and this that is surrounded by a very, very, very pressed, we can say, uh, words, very long uh, legends. But I, I say that there are some cities in which the toponym is mentioned in their own script, very few in which one of them is Abdera that you can see in the pediment, the legend 
in Neo Punic, Abdera. We know also coins from Ebusus that use the Punic script with Latin, which is a bilingual um, epigraphy. And we have another case that is Saguntum. But the case of Saguntum is, is quite singular because in this city, Greek epigraphy was scarce. The imperial portrait was accompanied by a legend that identified it. The structure and information with more words and abbreviation than before made provincial coins more and more like Roman ones. With Augustus, we found a very variety of titles reflecting that this was an aspect that was only progressively standardized when the legend Augustus Bibi Filius became widespread. Local coinages are a sign that society demanded coins of a small value and that only them, only with them, they filled a void that the Roman state couldn't or wasn't interested in filling. The urban development of Hispania, whose architectural landscape was significantly transformed from the time of Augustus with theaters, amphitheaters, baths, fora, uh, uh, what all the architectural elements that characterize a Roman city. So this urban development together with the increase in commercial activity raised its demand, demand of coins, and the monetization degree of the society. The civic coinage output, as well as the metal minted, in this case bronze, allow us to propose some ideas about what kind of needs they were able to cover and what they weren't. In Hispania, it's not possible to link the civic production to the army payment or to any other state expenditure. The volume of coins in each of the issuing cities show that most of them were unable to cover the, the basic financing needs with their issues, which we know that in Urso was at least 23,800 sesterci per year. Sporadic fines and courts give a good idea of the role played by the civic coinage between Augustus and Caligula. As far as the bronze coin is concerned, finds show that until the reign of Claudius I, its origin was mainly local. In fact, studies on monetary circulation show that 85% of the bronze coins at the beginning of the empire came from provincial means, while 15% came from official Roman issues. Consequently, it can be deduced that the motivations that explain the civic coinage must be sought in the cities themselves and that the reasons that promoted the issues may be diverse and concurrent. 
but in any case, they played an important role in the supply of bronze coins. Provincial issues of Hispania developed over a short period of time, and almost and most of the cities began their coinage during the reign of Augustus and under Claudius I, none of them were issued except for abusus to which two short issues are attributed. To conclude, the Roman provincial issues of Hispania constitute a fascinating and a rich phenomenon that reflects many aspects of the legal promotion of the most important native cities and the foundation of colonies, as well as their need for daily life coinages. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pereva, for this fantastic, uh, really, okay. Yes, here there are all the thank you for you. And uh, I mean, I have, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Before I ask my own questions? Okay, apparently no question from the audience. Uh, um, one thing which is i think for you very very quick to uh, to answer for me and uh, i would say one more that is of course i see that there is part of your presentation that you didn't have time to go uh, over so one is uh, do we have uh, individual donors on uh, coins uh, provincial coins in spain as we have, for example, uh, in uh, Pestum uh, or, of course, uh, in Asia Minor. So meaning people who do not have uh, uh, an official title. Well, no, the answer is no, we, we haven't. The magistrates appear in, in Latin case dative or nominative, but um, this is the only that we can uh, use to, to see or to, to think about what um, role they played. But no, there is no, because we haven't the formula that can be expanded as um, in the case of, of Pestum, for example. No. no. This is great. And uh, one more thing, you know, if it, this is, of course, uh, I, this would be a whole, uh, I think, long table uh, book on his. But according to you, given the important role that uh, these uh, provincial coins uh, played okay, within the economy of the cities, et cetera, what is the reason? why they were not issued anymore, let's say, after uh, the end, after basically the Julio Claudians. I mean, just, well, yeah. I know, there... I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that this is an enormous question, but just, and uh, there is no clear answer. It's just that I could not stop, yeah. Well, there are, well, in, in my opinion, the reason is a political reason, not economic. Right? But that permission wasn't granted, mm -hmm. not renewed, that was discouraged, that the cities was considered inappropriate, or 
that was the 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 power was thinking to to uh, unify the the coinage in the West. It's possible too. Or that people prefer to use Roman um, official uh, coinages instead of provincial, because we we are seeing that means uh, copy each time more and more the um, official issues, the Roman issues. I I I can show you in no. I can show you um, PowerPoint. This this is a well known a well known Cistercius for. Would you share your screen, please? Because oh, pardon, oh, sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. You can see this is uh, the well known Sestertius for Caligula, and this is a coin, a Sestertius struck in moon. Ercabica. Mm -hmm. There are the same case with um, Agrippa and other um, other types that are copied in by several myths. So it's. It's quite, quite general. Perfect. I mean, thank you. Uh, this is, and uh, I see that uh, Gilles has his uh, hands up, but just one thing, don't you think that is exactly the fact that they were issued uh, on the same standard as Roman currencies that did not make them convenient for the cities anymore, for example, you know, differently than from the, Eastern, where, for example, the Assyrian was so much lighter than the ass, for example. No, in, in, in this case, is 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 if they struck a sesterci in Oricalcum has the same way. Mm -hmm. If they struck sesterci in bronze, has four times the ass. Uh, of bronze, so right. uh, it's the 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 standard is is the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Gilles and uh... yes, uh, yeah. I know we it's it's two p.m. So I guess we we getting yeah. a, a short time, uh, Perry Paul. But um, regarding the um, disappearance of. Uh, Iberian provincial coinage. Is this something very with a strong sense of discontinuity, or is this gradual where the number of means and the volumes uh, of a number of dyes, if we can use die number to approximate volumes of production, dry out progressively uh, between, let's say, Tiberius and, and Claudius, or do, are we seeing like an abrupt end? This is, this is a, on the slide, there is a progressive uh, reduction of, of um, mint. And this is framed in the Western part of the empire. Say that if there is gold, Africa, all they are reducing, uh, at the end, in Caligula, only Spain are 
streaking currents and uh, only with Claude the first, just one mean. But you can see that there is a decline in the uh, minting output. So it's, there is a, a, well, the number of means are declining, yeah. And the volumes? And the, the volume, vo the volume is, um, um, well. Uh, sorry, people, I mean, in the surviving means, are we seeing fewer dyes in the ones that still uh, produce coinage? Yeah, the, the, there are, in terms of production per year, the reign of T Tiberius struck during the reign of Tiberius means struck more coins than per year. I mean, per year than Augustus. In 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 volume, Augustus is huge, mm -hmm. but mm, the rate ratio per year is higher Tiberius. And then Caligula, because of the of this small period of rain, uh, is a small, but but mm, it maintains the ratio per year is quite quite, quite stable, you can say. I mean, this is uh, would be so much more to discuss with this uh, gradual uh, diminution, uh, diminishing of the reduction of issues in terms of volume and uh, means. But I think that now we are well past two and we don't want to keep you. I mean, this is really Friday night for you, Pere Pao. And we really, really thank you for this incredibly informative presentation. Thank you very much from us all, really. Thank you. It's bye. a pleasure. So bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.